Today on The Topping Show, Donald Trump raised $4 million in 24 hours. Andrew Tate and his brother both freed. Bill to ban TikTok is being proposed. California to ban diesel trucks. Feds find Tesla violated federal labor laws. And a possible 10-year sentence for someone making a meme in America. All of that and much, much more on The Topping Show. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. Today's episode of The Topping Show is sponsored by ExpressVPN and Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value-added reseller and services company with a special proficiency in IT security. If you're a business owner or an IT leader, you use a little assistance. You can reach them at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Now, jumping into the business part of the podcast, it was not too surprising to find that the video game conference known as E3 is being canceled. A lot of people don't realize that it actually is an acronym, as many things are in life. The name is technically called the Electronic Entertainment Expo. Historically, it's been the most popular conference for the industry and is where companies debuted the latest and greatest upcoming developments. Platforms such as the PS3, Xbox 360, the Wii U, and other revolutionary technologies were all debuted there in the past. However, that was all before COVID. And an email from the event organizer in 2023 noted that, quote, simply did not garner the sustained interest necessary to execute it in a way that would showcase the size, strength, and impact of our industry. Now, the last time the conference was held back in 2019, before COVID, there were 66,000 attendees. And it also is just kind of a sign of the changing of the times. There was a time when the World's Fair used to be one of the largest expos in the world, hence its name, and countries would all showcase their latest and greatest technologies, be a great way for people to learn about things they've never seen about but thanks to our interconnected all the countries and all all the folks around the planet are these days with thankfully because of the internet frankly and satellite communications kind of makes a lot of those debut physical actual performances and events kind of a moot point in some industries so i'm not too surprised to see this it was pretty controversial quote unquote when Major brands, I believe it was Nintendo, and a couple of major manufacturers from the video game industry said that they wouldn't be attending, partially because of this, because nowadays they could easily reach their audience, whether they're going through Twitter, you got YouTube, Twitch, and a myriad of other ways to reach their end users and advertise. They don't necessarily just need this expo. So it's a little bit of a disappointment in the gaming community, but the IT industry will continue to move on and evolve. Now, going on to Tesla, the federal government found that Musk and Tesla violated labor laws. A federal appeals court on Friday upheld a previous finding that Tesla and Elon Musk violated labor laws by firing an employee involved in a union organization and making an apparent threat to rescind stock if they unionize. The ungrateful employee, I mean stand-up employee, is Richard Ortiz. And it's one of those things where a wise man once said, there are no solutions, just trade-offs. That wise man is Thomas Sewell, his brilliant, brilliant mind. And of course, if you unionize and increase cost, you're gonna get less benefits. You're not gonna get stock necessarily. And Tesla is very unique. One of the ways they incentivize all their employees to hustle so hard, because they wanna change the world, and they certainly have, is they actually give them stock. So they're incentivized to work like hell, and make the best products out there, because they'll increase the stock, thereby increasing their pocketbooks and their values. Now, going back into the actual particulars of the situation, you look at the most reliable cars out there, and most of them are made by non-unionized manufacturers. Specifically, you think of the most reliable car in history, Toyota Camry or the Corolla, Toyota as a whole. They don't have to deal with those types of situations because they don't have unions competing against them. It's all more of a team environment, so to say. Now, Elon specifically noted that, quote, Nothing stopping Tesla team at our car plant from voting union. In another tweet, he quoted, could do tomorrow if they wanted, but why pay union dues and give up stock options for nothing? Our safety record is twice better than when the plant was uh, worked by the United Auto Workers and everyone already gets health care. And the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals affirmed that Elon will have to now rehire that employee with payback. And also one of those strange situations where it almost seems like a free pass. If you're part of a union or if you're part of an organization, regardless of performance, you're going to get money, which is 
kind of convoluted. We don't know this particular person's performance. This may have been a performance call, but the data that we presented here, we're led to believe that is specifically because he wanted to unionize. So it'll be interesting to see if they try to appeal it yet again. I don't know how many strikes you get in that regard. Now, going on to other interesting automotive use, California is going to ban diesel trucks. Diesel trucks are basically how you get every single thing in your life on average. If you think of anything that's imported or even made in the United States, most of the transportation logistics industry is semi-trucks. And they all run on diesel and they provide an exceptional return on investment for the actual people who own the trucks or operate the trucks. Those diesel trucks can hit a million miles. And it's not, not rudimentary technology, but it's more straightforward techno technology than an electric car, which has many, many, many components. And a lot of those components are engineered to last a thousand miles, or sorry, a million miles. Electric cars will get more than a thousand miles, granted. But diesel engines are much easier to work on, and that's why you have third-party repair shops all across the U.S. that can help facilitate those repairs when they're needed or reconditioning when they're needed. Now, the Federal and Environmental Protection Agency is allowing California to ban a wide array of diesel-powered trucks. The ban in law would require truck manufacturers to sell a ever-increasing quantity of zero emission trucks over the next few decades. The rule applies specifically to, but not including, all, specifically, specifically including, but not limited to, good old vernacular of legalese, always fascinating, box trucks, semi-trucks, and even large passenger pickups. And this is coming in addition to Gavin Newsom's ban on the sale of new cars, I believe by 2023, as well as the ban on new gas stoves, gas heating, gas generators. And it's one of those things where Tesla did debut their semi-truck. It'll be interesting to see how it works in the real world. But one of the most difficult things when you're looking at the teeter-totter technology or you know the pros and cons, or like I was saying earlier, when you have the, there's no solutions like over only trade-offs. If you have an electric truck, one of the fastest ways to decrease the mileage and the actual capabilities and the range of the truck is to load it with actual load. So that's why there's a famous YouTube video where a gentleman actually towed a vintage Model T with a Ford Lightning pickup truck. And because he was towing with the actual pickup truck, the Ford F-150 Lightning, the range decreased dramatically. So right now, that's a big, that's a big bottleneck in the equation of how our trucks are going to work. Granted, if you look at the data of how many people actually tow with a pickup truck in the United States, that number is pretty darn small. There's a lot of people that have trucks in the cities or just have them because they like the idea of loading it up. So the average person might not have that big of a disadvantage when they actually put stuff into it. But with a semi truck in particular, that's the whole point. If you have a semi truck that's pulling an empty trailer behind it, that's literally useless. It's actually negative. That's why in logistics, they always plan to have products taken to and then products taken from wherever they're grow going so they could double their efficiency. Now, California already does not have the infrastructure to support the, all these EV initiatives. They, they famously have blackouts. They even told people not to charge the electric cars as recently a couple of months ago because the grid was so constrained. And spoiler alert, they're not developing nuclear power plants over there, which in 2023, given, given right now, that is the safest, cleanest form of energy that you can produce on a mass scale especially when you have congested areas like cities, you can't have sprawling fields of solar panels. You need to put them on all the roofs. You're not going to get that efficiency to actually power everything with the solar panel technology we have now. I'm not saying it might not happen in the future, but again, that's the bottleneck and the constraint that we deal with. And with the technologies we're dealing with right now, that's what you have to work with the equation. So they're basically gambling and hoping the technologies will come forth or realistically, like a lot of these initiatives and bans, they're just gonna extend the goalpost once they get to 2035 or whatever arbitrary date they're picking to ban all the gasoline. Now, going into the interesting culture part of the podcast, there's a 10 year prison, prison sentence for someone who made it a meme, or a meme, depending on how you like, you'd like to pronounce it. And this is in America, which is supposed to have freedom of speech. Now, this is interesting. There's a 10 year in federal prison because of a Hillary Clinton meme a gentleman made during a two, the 2016 election. He was convicted in Brooklyn federal court, quote, effort to use fake messages to try to trick Clinton voters, voters in suppression scheme, unquote. His trial was only a week, so some people are saying that it was pretty, for such a life-changing sentence, they're saying it was a pretty small amount of time for him to amount to defense and actually 
further develop and go over the facts. The man particularly is Jug Douglas Mackey, M-A-C-K-E-Y, who some are saying are is a far-right influencer, which these days I take that with a, not just a grain of salt, I take it with a metric ton of salt. Because even if you don't agree with someone, it's fascinating and a little, a little concerning when you immediately at, immediately say someone's far right just because they don't believe in one specific initiative you have or they have one belief. And that's the term has become so diluted, it means nothing at all these days. If you just say the most conservative or most minimalist of opinions, if it doesn't fall in line, they'll call you far right, which is ridiculous as calling someone far left. It's most people are in the middle. But again, that term has lost all meaning. Now, he was given the sentence first in January of 2021. Of course, he's like many things, you're going to try to appeal it. Now, the U.S. attorney, Breon Pease, noted that in a press release that the jury selected, the jury rejected Mackey's attempt to use the First Amendment free speech protection to, sh to shelf himself from criminal liability. Interesting quote there. And this is the lamest of all. It wasn't exactly exemplar of memes. Now, the meme, the actual description of it, it was, and this is something where this should have been a red flag where if you saw it, you should know as a joke or at least think for 18th of a second. So in the meme, it was on Twitter and his Twitter picture. So the profile picture is a man with a Bane mask from the Batman film, I think. And it had a MAGA hat. So that's the profile picture. So if you're a Hillary supporter, are you going to, why would you believe that? But the actual meme was an image of, I believe it was Hillary. And it's, the quote was, avoid the line, vote, vote from home, text Hillary 59925, vote for Hillary and be a part of history. So it was made to look as a pseudo political campaign telling people to vote via text versus actually going to vote. And if you fell for that, you are just beyond, beyond foolish. Just the profile picture alone. And also in America, you don't vote via texting Ideally, there'd be less technology in it because technology is inherently less secure, especially when she's exposed it to internet, telecommunications. Just basic, granted, I know basic lo logic and common sense are no longer common, but it's just ridiculous. And now, during the proceedings, they claim that on election day in 2016, at least 4,900 fools, I mean unique phone numbers, texted the word Hillary or something similar to that text message re recipient based on his meme. Now, as being, he was charged with voter, also being charged with vote, voter suppression or manipulating this whole process. Now, that many people may have texted it, but we don't know if those people actually did not vote because of it. So that's something I'm surprised they didn't quite try quantifying, maybe go to those people and ask, hey, did you not vote because of this? Granted, those people might, might not want to admit that they're that foolish. Now, a lot of people are concerning about this because especially it doesn't seem fair on the opposite side of the political spectrum you had a hillary supporter who did the exact same thing so she had a trump meme where it was a picture of trump it said vote for trump by texting this so it was the same exact circumstance but that person was not at all charged or prosecuted at all so a lot of people are saying it's kind of reminiscent of the pot calling the kettle black and it'll be interesting to see if this gentleman is able to appeal that and just how much I it's just astonishingly disappointed how many Americans were supposedly tricked by a meme. So again, every time you see something on the internet, be skeptical. Also, just look at who published the meme. Should save you from any online any embarrassment, or at least some embarrassment. Now, other interesting political or rather cultural news is the Tate brothers were finally released from the Romanian jail. Now they're currently uh, being held on house arrest. So Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate spent months in a Romanian jail without any charges being filed against him. And they're and actually, they're in solitary confinement for most of their time, supposedly, which some argue is cruel and unusual, especially when they weren't actually being charged with anything technically. So they're just waiting for the evidence to be presented. And the Romanian authorities just kept delaying and delaying and delaying their release. Because in Romania, you could hold someone, I believe, for 180 days without trial or bring charges to them, which is ridiculous beyond any imagination. I don't know anyone who actually considered that a lexicon or actually a sh an actual status of a 
proper legal system that you can trust. So they can just jail you for that long without any due process. Now, federal wiretaps supposedly, or sorry, February, February. In February, wiretaps supposedly proved that the brothers were framed in the beginning to make it look, to make their way around social media. Now, according to the wiretaps, the women who accused Tate had planned on setting him and his brother up by pretending to be in love with them, and then planning on playing dumb if they were caught during a police raid. This is according to some sources in Romania, who also claimed he may have been running a brothel. Still no evidence on that. They were arrested on December 2022. Now, going over to what Andrew Tate said, specifically from his release, he said, quote, Freedom at last. It's a bit emotional. I've been in one room since last year, so it's been a little bit emotional. I want to give my respect, firstly, to the judges who heard us today because they were very attract, very attentive, and they listened to us and let us free, so I have to give them absolute respect to them. I have no resentment in my heart for the country of Romania or anyone else. I just believe in the truth. I believe in God, and the fire of truth will eventually destroy all the lies, and anybody who lies uh, on a long enough time frame will feel the sting of regret, and I believe in this. I truly believe that justice will be served in the end. There is 0% chance of me being found guilty of something I have not done. I maintain my absolute innocence, and I think most people understand this, and I look forward to being home. And again, this is a American citizen, of course, and the government of the United States government, as far as I can tell, didn't do anything to try to get him free. And I don't know if that was a publicist who actually wrote that for him on his, I think this is TikTok, or not, sorry, not TikTok, Twitter. Hard to keep track of all the social media these days. And pretty eloquent statement. I don't know how much he truly, he truly has no resentment for being treated like that in Romania. I don't know how much I believe that statement, but it'll be interesting to see if any official charges or any actual evidence will be presented throughout this. A lot of conspiracy theories are already saying that Romania just did this to try to slow down the fascinating exponential growth in their social media campaigns and try to, you know, cut down on their messages. There's a lot of memes already saying how Andrew Tate had a, hit one of his theories was that he was part of the Matrix and he was fighting against, quote unquote, the system. And it was hilariously somewhat ironic that a lot of people noticed that he was released on the same day that the Matrix was. I believe it was 1999, but it was March 31st. So there's a lot of interesting, amusing memes and conspiracy theories further evolving from the situation. Now, going on to the political news, there's a ban TikTok bill being proposed. However, it's one of those things where a lot of people thought it'd be a good thing. I actually thought it was interesting to see Democrats and Republicans steaming up together, which I'm usually very hesitant about in terms of, will it actually be good for the end user or the actual American citizens, or is this something much, much worse? And unfortunately, the bill name is something that sounds good, but unfortunately it is much, much worse than you can possibly imagine. Now, the White House is very in favor of this bill, and the bill gives the government the ability to go after anyone they deem as a national security risk, at which point they can access everything from their computer to video games to their ring doorbell. So think of this as the Patriot Act on steroids. And because it says ban TikTok, a lot of people are going to think it's a good thing, unfortunately. And if this is what we have to accept in order to ban TikTok, it is absolutely not worth the risk because this gives them, it basically gives the government to the intelligence agencies. They have complete control and this is going to govern desktop apps, mobile apps, gaming apps, pay me, payment apps, web-based apps, information communication tech, your local home network, your mobile network, your wireless local area networks. And if they found you're guilty, or if, you're found if you are found in violation, they will put you in prison for 20 years and fine you $1 million in seizure property. And it gets much, much more concerning. And they also can deem any foreign government an adversary without informing Congress. And everything they do is not covered by the Freedom of Information Act, also known as FOA. So that further murkies the waters. You have no idea what they're doing. And if you ask what you're doing, traditionally, they would, thanks to the Freedom of Information Act, they would give you information. In this case, that's not subject to it. They don't even have to tell the president that they're declaring another country an enemy be, thanks to a 15-day window. So for 15 days, you, even the president might not know who they're declaring an enemy. So this is especially concerning. Even using a VPN would actually 
put you in the trouble. So ironically, this is also sponsored by ExpressVPN, help protect your online data. And link in the description. But yeah, if you're found using that, it's very concerning. It doesn't seem to be any due process. And thankfully, there's a lot of libertarian and independent candidates and representatives noticing this language, and even a couple of conservative and Republicans who are starting to promulgate these concerning aspects of this bill. This bill also allows grants with unlimited hiring power for positions of enforcement, unlimited funds, and little or no review with immunity completely from the Freedom of Information Act. So concerning to say the least, and of course, it's the, absolutely the last thing anyone wanted from the actual politicians in terms of banning TikTok. Sure, it's a foreign owned entity, which is incredibly invasive. It's basically spyware and it's also incredibly addictive. So there's not a lot of upside, especially for the youth using it. So if they really wanted to ban TikTok, they could just pass a bill that says, we're gonna ban this specific app from US consumers. That's not what this is. This is overreaching beyond anything you can possibly imagine. So it's quite concerning. Now, other interesting political news, and I don't wanna say I called it, but I did kinda of call it if you watched the last episode. Now. Trump's indictment has actually helped his campaign. In about 24 hours since the indictment was announced, Trump's campaign raised a little more than $4 million. So 24 hours, got about $4 million. And particularly interesting, Trump's campaign advisor, Jason Miller, noted that, quote unquote, one fourth of the Trump donations after the indictment came were from first time donors, unquote. Now, Many are skeptical about what are the odds that Trump could actually win. And one of the reasons he lost, I don't want to say famously, but well, I guess everyone knows that he lost a couple years back. But he lost because the independent voters didn't vote for him. And then a lot of the stay-at-home women did not vote for him. If you look at the demographics of where he lost votes. So less people voted for him in those categories than the first time that he was running for presidency. And to see that a lot of the new donations are coming from actual new people. That's a telltale sign that perhaps he is winning some of those more independent voters. It'll be interesting to see because that is what he needs. If he has, if he wants to have a fighting chance at the newest presidential election or upcoming presidential election, he needs that. He needs to somehow convince the independent voters that he is the right for, fit for them. And if he can do that, maybe he has a chance. Now, the average donation amount was about thirty-four dollars per donor, and it'll be interesting to see, you know, how. You know, how is this going to affect them long term? It seems to be a good thing, but ironically, this indictment actually might help them. Similar to, it's kind of reminiscent when during the FBI raids after Mar-a-Lago, when they were trying to find the secret documents, which, spoiler alert, politicians on the left and the right have had before, and they were never raided in that regard. But after that happened, he raised a lot of money off of that, and his campaign reaped, I believe it was a couple million dollars off that incident alone because people perceive him as being unfairly attacked. And some are saying he is a political, I don't want to say a prisoner, but he's been politically targeted to unprecedented level. So it's actually helping him his campaign. Granted, if they actually get the indictment successfully and they actually prosecute him, he'll be in jail. A lot of say, people are saying that's a small, small chance, but that might be a way to ensure he doesn't run. And a lot of people are actually wondering, could these funds be malicious in terms of during the midterm elections, Trump picked out a couple of particular candidates that he thought they're going to be really good. And when they were getting primary, a lot of the voters on the Democratic side actually donated money to his picks because they correctly assumed that they would be easier to beat during the actual midterms. And spoiler alert, that tactic worked perfectly because the Republicans failed the midterms epically. It was supposed to be a red wave and it was barely, it was barely a drizzle. It was ridiculous and granted if they had some more astute leaders they'd probably clear house and try to get a whole new bench so to say for the football team but as far as i can tell they didn't change anything with the gop leadership which how you keep a job after such a spectacular fail is beyond me and quite embarrassing now going on to the interesting business blunder of the day austal execs are being indicted for liability for those who have never heard austal usa is a subsidiary of the austrian-based austal limited that company is known for making the littoral combat ships for the US, U.S. Navy, which 
were a fascinating attempt at a new naval technology to kind of have more of a battleship, but kind of like a Mini Cooper of a battleship. So a battleship that's fast, stealth, but they're just a myriad of issues and build quality and just the whole idea kind of fell apart. So it was a little bit of a boondoggle. Granted, a lot of technologies like that, you have to invest and you're going to have winners and losers of the technology. Sometimes you're going to knock it out of the park. Other times you'll have some lessons learned. And unfortunately, this was a former, not the latter. They had myriad of issues. Actually, half of the fleet that they constructed had structural issues. And those defects led to hull cracks. And those cracks would grow if the ship went faster than 15 knots with a max wave of 8 feet. So very much limiting their actual mobile capabilities. Now, three current and a former execs are being indicted on accounting frauds, and allegedly those frauds are accusing them of falsely inflating the company's reported earnings, according to the federal prosecutors. And again, it's one of those things where you can fool people for maybe a fiscal quarter, but not only is it morally disgusting when you mislead shareholders and the public and their employees, but it's also never sustainable long term. So to do anything malicious, especially nowadays when you do have unprecedented amounts of visibility, it's not only morally disgusting, but it's also completely disrespectful to everyone you work with. And if proven guilty, it'll be nice to see them actually get some consequences. Granted, they are innocent until they're innocent until proven guilty. And once they have that day in court, maybe they'll bring some new evidence that we don't know that now. Nevertheless, that is certainly the business wonder of the day. Thank you everyone for tuning in today. Can't thank you enough. Also, if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. It helps out the channel a lot. Also, don't forget to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe and fight the good fight.